lecture notes we were doing part L correct and it said if you saw all five people developing the disease would that be unusual that's what that's what we were talking about correct so give me an N and give me a P for that problem N was five part L N was five what was P? Was it one quarter? Yep, one quarter. And the question was, is R equal five successes unusual? That's the question, right? So we had a rule, we have a rule that says our successes are unusually high if probability x greater than or equal to r is less than or equal to 0 0.05. That's the rule. So we had found that the probability of 5 was 0 0.00097, which we said, let's just call that 0 0.001, something like that. Is that right? Can you check that number, please? Is that correct? So we're saying that this is what we're doing. We have some binomial distribution, and we want to see if 5 is considered unusual. So we have to take 5 and everything that comes after 5, which in this case, there's nothing, right? And see if that's less than 5%. So certainly 0 0.001 is less than 5%, therefore, five would be considered unusual. How about four successes? Would four successes be considered unusual? Who knows, let's see. So let's make a part, part M. I'm making it up, okay? You're going to see this on your test, so, so I'm elaborating on it. Would four successes be unusual? So I'm following the rule here that says if four successes are to be unusual, then the probability of four or more, so, or five, add up those probabilities, and if that is less than or equal to 0 0.05, that would mean that four is already too far gone that the probability of being even worse than it is so small that it's not in the usual range of values. Does that make sense? If the probability of four or more is tiny, it means that four is too far, far away from the usual values that the probability of being even more extreme than that is very small. That means there's nothing usual about four because if four were a normal, a usual value, it would be somewhere closer to the center, wouldn't it? So that the probability of being more than it would be greater than 5%. Are you understanding me? Okay, so what was the probability of four in this problem? Remember, we created a whole table of values. It's on the, it's on the other page. If you miss, if you flip, yeah. Read me the probability of four. 0 0.0146 is the probability of four. And the probability of five, we just said, was 0 0.001. So when I add these together, I still get 0 0.0147, 
0.0156, which of course is smaller than 0.05. Therefore, even 4 is unusual. Are you getting me? Are you following me? How about 3? Would 3 be unusual? Let's see. Part N. I'm making up these, of course. Would 3, would 3 be unusual? So I'm going to take probability of 3. Let's draw a picture so it makes it very clear. And 4 and 5 because I have to take 3 and everything above 3. It's like p-value. I'm finding p-value here, right? Probability of being more extreme than that. So I'm going to take 3 and 4 and 5 and add them. So, Miss, can you read me the probability of 3 again? Because I've already found it. 0 0.0879. Wow, it's already greater than or equal to 5. It's, it's already bigger than 5%, right? So certainly 0 0.0879 plus 0 0.0146 plus 0 0.001, all that added together, the sum is not less than or equal to 0 0.05. not less than or equal to 0 0.05. Therefore, 3 is not unusual. Is it perfectly clear? How about unusually low? I want you to tell me right now if 2 would be an unusually low value for this problem. See, luckily for us, we've already found all the probabilities, right? But on your exam, you wouldn't have found that distribution, so you would have to figure out what those probabilities are. So let's make a part O. Is 2 to be considered unusually low? What do you think? The rule is our successes are unusually low if the probability of x less than or equal to r is less than or equal to 0.05. In other words, now go more extreme into the left tail. So I'm interested in probability of 2 or 1 or 0, right? How would I find this in one step? I know that we've already found the individual probabilities, but had we not, how would I find it? Binomial what? CDF, binomial CDF of NP2. So n, of course, is 5, and p is a quarter. Can you find me this number? Binomial CDF of 5, comma, 1 quarter, comma, 2. I expect a really large number. How come you're not, you guys have to pull out your calculator and do it right now? How come your calculators are not out? Yeah, 0.897, right? Huge probability. So I'm, I took the sum of all of these because I want two or less. Yes. Okay, I'll go back to the previous question in just one second. So, 
0.897 is not less than or equal to 0.05, so there's nothing unusual about two people developing the disease after exposure. Does this make sense? Bless you. Okay, previous question, let's see. There's a question about the previous question. Would three be unusual? That one? So you want, the quick way to do this would be one minus binomial CDF of NP2. Yeah, which is what we did. So it would be 1 minus 0 0.897, right? Why not? Well, did you get something close? So this is 0 0.9 basically, right? 1 minus 0 0.9. 0 0.897 is 0.9. So did you get roughly 10%? Point one zero three is point one zero, right? So what I'm saying is, I, I know what I know what you're saying to me, but look at look at the rounding. This is roughly point nine, right? So that's this is point nine, and this is one minus point nine. So my answer is roughly ten percent, which is not less than five percent. So don't worry about the third place after the decimal or something like that. Roughly speaking, is it less than 5% or is it greater than 5%? So it's double of 5%, that's what I'm trying to say. Get it? So basically, we're talking p-value here. You see that, right? <coughs> p-value is a probability of being more extreme than where you are. More extreme to the right or more extreme to the left, depending on whether you're unusually high or unusually low. Get it? Okay. Any question on this? <laughs>